Hi, everyone. Uh, Ivan, one of the co-founders of Noto. Uh, we are a Rectech solution that uh, focuses on fraud prevention and AML transaction monitoring. Uh, let me start by giving special thanks to the Visa Innovation Program N11 for today's invitation and opportunity to speak today. Um, when I was putting my uh, presentation for today, I was wondering uh, what should I do? Shall I pile a bunch of uh, facts that we already know about how important compliance and AML is? What are the implications if uh, um, organizations don't follow that and uh, the potential fines about not being compliant or how great Noto as a product is? And the other thought that I had was just to share our perspective uh, coming from uh, our shoes as a vendor in the space on what's coming, what do we see, what the challenges are, and also our past and uh, previous experience in that space. Uh, before we talk about trends in AML and uh, compli <coughs> sorry, compliance, I think it's important to take a look at the current state of the payment ecosystem. The open banking is already transforming the financial services industry. We can see so many startups uh, building products on that and delivering products around instant banking and open APIs. Um, virtual assets that are so uh, been popular lately are obviously here to stay and yet to review their full potential. At the same time, we have some hybrid products that are crypto to fiat that are also helping drive adoption in that space through offering a kind of connection between the crypto world and the traditional fiat instruments as prepaid cards, for instance, that we all have. Uh, money remittance and challenger banks, just take a look at uh, companies like TransferWise, like Revolut, like N26. They have completely transformed the customer onboarding and the customer experience as a whole. At the same time, by doing that, customer experience is becoming more and more virtual, but ever more involved and close. You can see how they do support and how they interact with customers. And uh, what does that have to do with the coming trends and what are we seeing? Um, Information sharing will continue to move on past the big banks and also impact fintechs, which will also have to expose on their own uh, way their APIs and platforms to another layer of third parties. Uh, regulation will move into the virtual asset space as well, and if uh, companies in that segment would like to continue to develop, they will have to adopt certain level of compliance, if not more rigorous than what we already have and expect. Fintechs to on their own to drive demand for automated and more sophisticated AML tools and products so they can continue to offer that seamless and smooth experience that we're used to having. Sanctions landscape is not becoming any more simpler, actually. On the contrary, it gets even more complex. And yeah, uh, sophisticated transaction monitoring solutions are really uh, in high demand, are becoming more and more the necessity. Um, in a recent report published by KPMG, they introduced the term of compliance agility, putting the emphasis on having really flexible, adaptable, and quick to manage compliance program and setup. Um, all that innovation that we see uh, that I just mentioned by some of the challenger banks and other fintechs is not coming uh, at, uh, let's say, any uh, reduction of risk trade-off. On the contrary, uh, the more distant and virtual the relationship between end customer and vendor is, more risks exist around usage of false identities or fraud of any type or money laundering. Uh, the data will continue to be the key uh, asset that any fintech or any uh, payments organization uh, have and possess, and they should really pay attention on its safekeeping and safeguarding. Uh, if we look what we have on our desks and what our tool set is to uh, deal with all these challenges, very often we see that fundamental tech is still not as reliable as it needs to be or as accurate. Um, talking to potential customers, we still see uh, quite outdated solutions that run batch every day, then uh, the whole compliance team reviews the same alerts time and again and uh, comes upon the same cases over and over. Uh, there is actually a lot of reliances on that, um, and all these tools are really heavy to customize. Updating an AML scenario monitoring setup usually takes reaching out to the tech department, 
doing a whole new deployment, even uh, a whole um, installation upgrade. Uh, and at the end of each demo that we do, or very frequently, we get the question, how can I export this to Excel so I can filter down to what I really need to? And as funny as it is, it's actually an everyday problem that a lot of uh, compliance and risk management people have in their day. Uh, what are the trends in RecTech? And uh, I use RecTech as a really broad solution, uh, or sorry, term for um, any tool that is uh, aimed at transaction monitoring for different purposes, whether that's AML, whether that's fraud monitoring of any type or account takeover or any malicious activity. Um, we hear the terms of machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning. Uh, they're on top of every sales presentation. And uh, actually, we get to be told very little about what is actually behind that. And uh, what is that going to mean for our organization, and how do we use it? Biometrics and social media data, the smarter our devices get in our pockets, um, the more of that data they generate. And um, properly used, it can uh, mean a lot about the customer that is using your services across the ocean or on a different com continent. Real-time decision-making, monitoring, identification of trends is really becoming the norm already. Um, all that being said, and regardless of how quick, smart, and efficient AI and machine learning becomes, the human factor is still here to stay. Um, a lot of the success of certain implementation or usage of given solution still depends on the expert and uh, in-house know-how, because without it, it's just probably a nice product that won't do much for you. Uh, before you pick your AML solution or vendor, um, the first one is really tempting, the buy versus build dilemma. Very often you hear probably from your tech department, oh, that's easy, we'll build it in three months. Or um, all these products that you are bringing for us to evaluate, they're nothing special, we can do the same. But ask yourself some other questions. Do you have the long-term resource to sustain that? Do you have actually the product knowledge to develop such a product and, again, maintain it for years to come in-house? Because um, I've personally, in the Paysafe group in my past, I've been part of a couple of failed such initiatives that took two or three years internally to realize that we're not doing the right thing. And again, the cost is not fully realized when taking the build route versus buy. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, what's really behind it? Usually it's a bunch of statistical models or modeling techniques that are aimed to identify certain activity, certain patterns, whether that's fraud or potential money laundering, uh, or they're geared to identifying some of that. Um, but ask yourself the following, uh, do I have enough data? Is it structured well enough so I can train and iterate quickly with those techniques. Uh, the main rule there is really garbage in, garbage out. So before picking the next fashionable product that looks very sexy and hip and offers all that uh, functionality that you only have to tell what's good and what's bad, and it will automatically do everything for you, well, look it up a little bit closer. The solution legacy and background. Um, think about where the vendor is coming from. Uh, where they've originated from. Are they catering exactly to your industry, let's say banking or issuing or acquiring or any payment processing? And how that background would be useful for your use case or not? Because a lot of the solutions are architected out of certain segment of the space, and then they expand and grow, but bring a lot of limitations. Um, the ROI, the CFOs ask that question very frequently. Um, how can we improve that? Well, ask yourself the question, can we do more than AML with the solution? Can we do fraud? Can we do account takeover? Can we look at loyalty? The underlying data is the same. It's your customer profile data and their financial activity. Why deployment options matter? Well, SAS versus on-premises, different economy of scale. For large organizations, that is really important and might be the needle mover between successful and profitable ROI on your project or not. Uh, again, can I apply my in-house knowledge and expertise with that solution? How flexible it is? Can I map my data the way I want it? Can I describe my use cases as they should be and as I want to identify them? Uh, all these are questions that you should consider. 
And again, I already covered some of those, but before you shake hands with any potential vendor, uh, look carefully at the integration and how complex it is. It is probably the single most crucial factor for the success of your implementation project or not. Usually vendors put a lot of hidden cost around it, and that can certainly go very easily over budget. How much customization is required in really to deliver what I'm being promised? A lot of solutions promise a lot of uh, features and a huge feature set, but they come at the cost of very long integration times and uh, expensive uh, process. Uh, what level of support will I get? And last but not least, conduct a POC. Don't take for granted uh, what you are being promised. Give the potential vendors a handful of use cases that you would like to see implemented in their test environment and see that actually done, because it will answer a lot of questions. And it's much better than 150 questions long RFP or RFI document that most vendors will answer with just yes without thinking and understanding your questions. And last but not least, get the commercials right, because the commercial model is important. It's a bit easier for the compliance people to justify a solution in front of their CEO, because they say it's the cost of doing business. We have to be compliant. For the fraud people, it's a little bit more challenging, because they have to come up usually with a positive business case. So again, if those two work together on a single platform, uh, it's much easier to uh, get the necessary budget and approvals in place. I think those were all my points for today, and I know lunch is waiting out there, so I would like to thank you for your attention. And for any questions, I'm in front with the rest from the Visa Innovation Program, and thank you for your time. <clears throat>